Hey, I'm David Levin, and this is Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes stories and anecdotes of your favorite TV shows from the people who were there. Today, the final part of my interview with the great Hal Linden, TV's Barney Miller. Hal tells us what he thinks the real reason was that the Barney Miller cast never won an Emmy. We talked about his good experiences in theater and came back around to what was then his current gig in Pirates of Penzance on Broadway. Hal talks about how much he loves the work and how he feels about keeping memorabilia. Here's the final part of my interview with Hal Linden. We talked about um, the fact that it was an independent production company, and most people don't know how the Emmys work. Oh, the Emmys. Um, uh, Barney Miller, you know, I say this, uh, I'll say this, probably one of the greatest ensemble casts ever associated, uh, ever assembled. <coughs> Not one member of that cast ever won an Emmy. I think there were three Emmys in its in its in its eight year life. Uh, one for a, a script, some writer mounted his own campaign. Not even a staff writer, outside writer got an Emmy for that. I think there was a directorial award, and I think the last year after we were canceled, it won best show. Yeah. But that was it. Not one of those incredible actors, Max Scale. Or, Ron Glass, even Jack Sue, when he died, one would think out of something, some recognition, nothing. Uh, again, the reason is because it was an independent production. There were maybe 20 people working in the office. I mean, you, people, shows that, made a, that were made at 20th Century Fox have 3,000 people working on the lot and they all vote in the, uh, in the Emmy. So it's, it's kind of weird. It's all about the votes at the end of the Yeah, day. we stopped going after a while. I, we were not, I was nominated seven times. Seven of the eight, eight times, something like that. Seven times. Seven times. Um, but, uh, you know, we, the guy said, I'm not going to get all dressed up to go, <laughs> to go to that again. We stopped going. That would have been the year, accepting the award for it. Yeah. Somebody, won, somebody must have been there to accept the best show award. I don't know who it was. What's something that I never heard about Barney Miller that would surprise me, or that you know, no, you've never told somebody out, you know, like in public or something that would be like a new, different. No, I don't think I have any secrets. Barney wasn't. Uh, there were no. There was no scandal. There were no feuds, particularly. Yeah, a couple of you know. No, we're not looking for that stuff. Nothing. No. Uh, it was work. It was glorious work. We who have, I have spent my life in, you know, in theater and in television. Some magnificent experiences. I just did a play where we had a living author on in rehearsal. And every day <coughs> was, there was a bit of, there, he was rewriting coming from what we were doing in rehearsal. It was wonderful. It was great. Play didn't work. <laughs> Play never went on. But, but the work was so wonderful. I, I've always said it. I'm, I'm, I'd much rather rehearse than perform. Hard uh, to get Gilbert and Sullivan for rewrites, I would guess. Yes. That's they're, they're <laughs> tough there. Uh, and that was, this was one of the toughest things because there was no rehearsal period. I'm talking about Pirates of Penzance. There was no rehearsal period. This is an opera company. They hire a, a Rudolfo. You come. You, here's the set. You have one run through. Don't bump into the furniture. Sing your arias, you know. <laughs> and that's the way it was. I had to do all the work myself before I got here. I came here three days before, four days before we we did our first uh, dress rehearsal. So um, it was. Uh, this was a very different way of working, but I've always been the rehearser, which I think is why I loved Barney, because it was all rehearsal. Right down, there was never a show for an audience. It was just rehearse it, try it this way, try it that way. Rehearse it again and again. Okay, bring the cameras in. We're ready to do it. And that's the way we did it. And, and if you came up with a better idea at the last minute, you say, wait a minute, let me try it one different way. And you know, you do it again. Again, being an independent, he could do that. Being an independent, you could do that. The studio would never sit still for that. Not a single ad lib, not a single improvisation. If there were, they became, they were 
you know, we checked it out. You know, this is a, he came up with this line. He said, what do you think? This, because, again, the determining factor was not whether it was funny, but did it propel the scene? Did it move the scene? Were we on the same line as the intention of the writers to begin with? And if it was, you know, they weren't averse to it. If it was funny, you know. But it was all work, 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 acting work, ensemble work. I have not had that opportunity many times in my career. Have you kept any memorabilia? Jimmy Olsen from Superman kept his bow tie. <laughs> what do I keep? Yeah, I have something in my... I have, uh, yeah, I have my thing that says Captain Barney Miller on the desk. I think it's on my desk. Um, we put a lot of that stuff into the Smithsonian. I went down there and put the, uh, the, the holding pen is in the Smithsonian. I think... Uh, Jack Sue's desk, I don't remember. A few things. The whole, and the uh, board, remember the board, the Pegan board? Mm -hmm. That's in the Smithsonian oh, now. Any, mm -hmm. um, are you keep in touch with the other guys? You know, when we get together is when there's an occasion, you know, a Barney Miller retrospective at a museum or someplace, we'll all be on the stage and spend the time together. But uh, show business is funny, you know, you. You make these loving, familial relationships with your cast. I've, uh, listen, I've done over 20 Broadway shows, and we've, every one of them, there was this, you know, bond. this bond. We were all working on the same show, and the minute it closed, you went on to the next show, and that's what happens, unfortunately. Uh, I was closest to Danny. Uh, and Danny died about seven, eight years ago, and... Uh, That was it. Actually, all of the main characters are still alive. I believe the only exception now is Jimmy Gregory. Jimmy died some years ago too. Jimmy played the inspector. Who was a. There's another Danny Arnold creation. Jimmy uh, Jimmy Gregory had this incredible career in, in in films. He must have done 50 films. He was either a senator or a judge or a, a bad guy. You know. You never saw him do comedy. Danny knew it was in there. I don't know. I don't know they were friends, and he knew him, and, and created this incredible character. And there it was. <laughs> and there it was. Yeah. Well, I, w I would love to keep talking to you, but I know you got other stuff to do. But, okay. uh, but this was so much fun. Thank Great. you so much. I Pleasure. appreciate it. It was so nice to meet you. Pleasure. Hey, I'm David Levin. Till next time, please leave me your comments. Let me know what you think of the show. I read every one of them. And if you can't watch the video version, you can listen to our podcast. And if you're listening to our podcast, you can watch us on YouTube at Pop Goes the Culture TV. Please subscribe. Please follow Pop Goes the Culture on Twitter at PopGoCulture, Facebook, or email me at PopGoesTheCultureTV at gmail.com. And please subscribe to our Patreon campaign. Just a buck or two from you can keep, keep me doing these shows. And for three bucks, you get a chance to be on our sister show, Ask Them Yourself. And if you want me to stop doing them, you can't afford it. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.